Concerning the field questions for US Simile, I have a student from within our Telegram group asking if there is a different technique I have for answering the step two questions, which are longer, okay, compared to the step one questions. Now, many of you are prepping for step one. So just in general, when we talk about long question stems, all right, I've made plenty of fucking clips here on the YouTube talking about this. Let me answer the same dumb question, okay? But do I have any updated points as far as refinements for how to tackle long stems, finish blocks in a timely manner, okay? I'll give you a very consolidated slash excellent answer here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below, notes start the clip. So yes, the student uh, is asking about long uh, question stems, okay? Step two versus step one, but just in general, because many of you are prepping for step one. Uh, I have articulated innumerable times that when you get a long stem in particular, what you want to do, always glance at the answer choices, okay? Is it a next best step in management? Is it an organism? W what kind of question is it, all right? Is it a just what's the diagnosis? So you quickly just glance at the answer choices, and then you're just going to go backwards. I'd say maybe about a quarter to a third of NBME questions, you can just answer by looking at the last line. All right, so you're going to get a big fucking paragraph, all these lab values, and then you have a sentence on the bottom that just says, and by the way, there's bihylar lymphadenopathy, the answer is just sarcoidosis. Okay, so you didn't have to read that big fucking question, did you? So I glance at the answer choices, I look at the last one or two lines, you can often get a diagnosis or uh, answer based on that. If they have the lab values, were the answer choices renal, as an example, okay? If they're renal, I say, okay, do I have a BUN to creatinine ratio? I mean, do we have uh, sodium potassium pH bicarb for an aldosterone type of question? So do I see a creatine kinase there? Okay, do I see a pH of the pleural flu fluid when we're dealing with surgery and pyema type questions? So I look at the answer choices, look at the last couple of lines, look at the lab values, and then if there's a big fucking paragraph, if I haven't gotten the answer yet, okay, there's a big paragraph, I'll glance around the paragraph just as though it's a wordless collage. Do any keywords capture my attention? Did I notice a blood pressure? Did I notice any uh, buzzy bag of worms for varicocele, okay? Sometimes you notice certain things. If a student sends me a question, okay, candidly I'm answering it, and that's how I'll, that's how I'll tend to do things. After maybe five to seven seconds, if I still haven't arrived at the answer, the student will hear me say, you got to be fucking kidding me. I got to read this question right now. And that's when I go back to the beginning. Okay. That's why I hate answering psych questions, for example, because many of them you actually have to read. All right. I don't actually read NBME questions anymore. And by the way, I should articulate that I don't romanticize any particular procedure for going through questions. When I discuss how to answer long questions, it's not because I've contrived slash manufactured this process as though that's just what I believe to be ideal. It's that over a decade of tutoring, doing thousands upon thousands of questions daily with students, this is how I've evolved to answer questions. Okay, so um, Especially on the 2CK forms, yes, where the questions are longer, students can run into problems if I send them a question and they instantaneously say, a 32-year-old woman comes to the physician and I say, stop fucking reading. I say, glance at the answer choices, look at the last couple lines, look at the lab values, go back through the vignette, glance at keywords, and only if you don't get the answer, then you should start at the beginning. You know the deal, I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.